Witchen or Witchers, an elite and mysterious caste of warrior monks. In popular lore, they're portrayed as possessing magic powers and superhuman abilities. Witchers were believed to combat evil spirits, ghastly monsters, and all manner of dark forces. It's possible that witchers had animal eyes, which granted them sight in near darkness, rendering survival probable in encounters with fiends both subterranean and nocturnal, kobolds, vampires and ghouls. Witchers used their silver swords to kill creatures of magic provenance, wraiths, cursed souls and striggers. With their swords of meteorite steel, they felled non-magic beasts, and the occasional human, who refused to pay for services rendered. In combat, witches would go into a trance, induced, it's supposed, through self-hypnosis or the consumption of intoxicants. They fought with blind abandon, sensing absolutely no pain, ignoring even serious injuries, which fed fears and superstitions about their unearthly powers. There is little doubt that witches were perceived to be vile beings who could bring misfortune down upon common folk with their gaze alone. The heroes of fairy tales and other yarns, witchers entered the folklore of the Nordlings. This is true of one especially, Geralt the Riv, known as the White Wolf. Five years after the Great War, the Northern Kingdoms continued to suffer. Rivers flowed red with elven blood, and life was cheaper than a fistful of coppers. The world needed a hero. They said he arrived on the wings of a storm to help the downtrodden. They said he'd gone mad and died. They called him the Sword of Destiny. They said he returned, for only evil can vanquish evil. In truth, Geralt of Rivia reappeared, barely breathing and bereft of memory, near the Witcher's citadel of Kaer Morhen. The wild hunt, War's Omen, sped across the sky, while in Vizima, a cow gave birth to a two-headed calf. All other claims are legend. At Kaer Morhen, Geralt recovered, yet even his one-time lover, the powerful sorceress Triss Merigold, could not restore his memory. The calm would not last. Armed brigands led by the sorcerer Azar Javid and the professor, a killer for hire, attacked the citadel. Though bandit blood stained Kaer Morhen's walls, the attackers made off with their prize. The secrets of Witcher mutation, concealed for centuries, disappeared in a flash of magic. The witchers set off on a search, as tradition ordained, to the four corners of the world. Geralt of Rivia went south to the Temerian capital of Vizima, where he'd once cured a princess of a curse. When the cat is away, King Foltes was nowhere in sight and Vizima was in turmoil. The Order of the Flaming Rose, Grand Master Jacques de Aldersberg at its head, pursued its crusade against non-humans. With whips and chains, swords and fire, the Order's ruthless steel-clad knights hunted all those they deemed strange for their ears or their stature. In Vizima, the Witcher picked up the bandit's trail. He learned they were members of Salamandra, a secret criminal guild. Brutal in their methods, they dealt in fistech, murder, and extortion. Geralt didn't know these were means to a darker girl. As the Witcher hunted Salamandra, he was drawn into the conflict between the Scoyatel rebels and the Order of the Flaming Rose. The two sides finally clashed in the swamp near Vizima. Knights of the Order and Scoyatel fought a bloody battle, while Geralt faced Azar Javid and the Professor. The mage felled Geralt with powerful spells leaving him as fodder for swamp monsters. Triss saved the witcher's life. He recovered under her nurturing hand. She introduced him to powerful politicians and influential merchant guildsmen. The mood in the city was tense. Confined to ghettos, non-humans spoke openly of mutiny. There was no sign of the king. Geralt found allies for his struggle against Salamandra. The witcher resumed his hunt. He destroyed Salamandra's secret fist egg factories and killed the Professor. The Witcher found Azar Javid's hideout. This time Geralt was prepared and no spells the renegade mage threw at him could stop his sword. Yet the stolen Witcher's secrets were in the hands of another, Jacques de Aldersberg, Grand Master of the Order. Provoked by the knights, non-humans rebelled. De Aldersberg responded, releasing his greater brothers, the horrific result of his experiments with the Witcher's mutagens. Vizima was in flames and dying. Enter Foltest and his army. The king summoned the Witcher and demanded the head of the Grand Master, a monster in human form and a usurper. The Witcher set out in search of Jacques de Aldersberg and the stolen Witcher's secrets. 
The Grand Master plunged Geralt into his vision of the future, where the Wolf's Blizzard would destroy the world and kill all, no matter their race or abilities. De Aldersburg wished to create superhumans, ensuring the survival of the human race. It was a vision Geralt rejected. He drove his sword through the Grand Master's heart and did well. For the vision was naught but a madman's nightmare. They say the King of the Wild Hunt appeared to claim De Aldersburg's soul. They say the Grand Master was an evil man, for the Wild Hunt comes only for the filthiest and most vile. They say only evil can vanquish evil, but those are only legends. In truth, Geralt recovered the Witcher's secrets and Vizima proclaimed him a hero. Yet life is no fairy tale. One story ends, another begins. As the King handed the Witcher his reward, an assassin attacked. His cat-like eyes and medallion were unmistakable, but that is another story.